6.3 involves interpreting sinusoidal functions. So it's not quite getting to the transformation stage yet, but it's giving you an idea of the different types of graphs and how we can use them to model different things. So I'm going to go through a couple of examples. Um, there's really nothing to teach here. It's more a situation where you need to interpret graphs and try to understand what they mean and how it looks on on a graph for a sinusoidal function. So I'm going to do number four, number six. If there's anything really uh, stumping you, let me know and I'll, I'll see if I can find some time to help you out. But let's take a look at question four and this is on page 371. So 371 in your textbook, again textbook here is also online. You can access it from a link that I've posted several times. So it says that Evan's teacher gave him a graph to help him understand the speed at which the tooth on a saw blade travels. The graph shows the height of one tooth on the circular blade relative to the cutting surface relative to time. Question A says, how high above the cutting surface is the blade set? So remember we're talking about one tooth. So, you know, a cutting blade, you know, they're round like this and they have all these teeth around them like this. So we're looking at one individual blade and tracking its movement around. So where does it go around? It goes up, it goes down. So how high is the blade set? Well, this is where the tooth started. That's as high as it goes. So that would be its height here. So it would be one inch, one inch above the cutting surface. So this blade is cutting through something. It's a saw, so I'm guessing it's wood. So the second question says, what is the period? So remember the period is something that you measure either between two troughs, like from here to here, or it could be between two peaks, which is the easiest way to measure this one because it starts at a peak, goes to another peak, and it was 0 0.04 seconds. So take 0 0.04 seconds for the blade to make one complete rotation. So for it to start here and go all the way around would be 0 0.04 seconds. So it's cutting through and back up. Of course, it's going very, very fast, 0.04 of a second. What is the amplitude of the function? Now the amplitude, remember, is the height from the axis. So I need to know where the axis is. I need to know what is the midpoint of these two points. So between plus one to minus seven, you would know that would be eight units. So you can either go up four units from here or down four units from here, which would mean the axis would be here. Now, it's a good idea to sketch it on to see if it makes sense to you, right? So this is um, minus three. So it means that the amplitude, not the amplitude, but the the amplitude is from here up. So how far is it from here to here? So again, I had to find the axis first. Find axis. And that would be when the height is equal to minus three. So the amplitude is the distance from that axis to the top or from the axis down. So minus three to minus seven is four units. This is four from here to here and it's four from here to here. So four. And what does that represent? So it's saying from here when it goes around, um, this four is actually the radius of this saw blade. And it could be the radius of all kinds of things. You'll be doing questions with Ferris wheels. So it'd be the radius of the Ferris wheel. It could be the radius of anything that's round, that's spinning around and making these beautiful sinusoidal curves, which is the radius of the blade. Okay, so like I said, you'll have like Ferris wheels, um, it's also, this part here would be uh, the axle of a Ferris wheel. So let's say we have a Ferris wheel like this. The axle would be in the middle. So that would be where your um, 
this obviously isn't a Ferris wheel because it's going under the ground. Okay, now the hard part is the speed. And this is where everyone gets a little confused because speed, remember, it says how fast is the tooth going in inches per second? So in order to figure out speed, you know that speed is equal to distance divided by time. So in this case, the time is the period. So time is period here. The distance traveled, however, we need to do a little calculation. Because if I said, how far did this go if it went all the way around? You should be able to see that we're covering the circumference of a circle. So I need the circumference here. Circumference. Do you remember that word? It means a distance around a circle. So the circumference is 2 pi r. 2 pi r divided by time. And if I plug in my radius here, we said the radius was 4. So we have 2 pi times 4. That's 8 pi over the distance, or the time, sorry, 0 0.04. And never write so many things on one line. It's just really bad format. That comes out to 628 inches per second. I run out of room and I'm off the page almost. So when you're asked to find the speed or how fast something is turning, you need to know the circumference, which means you need the radius and the radius is the amplitude. So two pi r divided by time and that gives you the speed in meters per second. Okay, so the last question I want to do is just one where you're asked to sketch a number of different um, height versus time graphs and they give you um, it's a sketch a height versus time graph of the sinusoidal function that models each situation draw at least three cycles assume that the first point plotted on each graph is at the lowest possible height okay so that's usually what they talk about when you're doing a ferris wheel you don't get on a ferris wheel up here you get on a ferris wheel when you're on uh, close to the ground right you take a little few steps up and you hop in so this one says a Ferris wheel with a radius of 7 meters whose axle is 8 meters above the ground and rotates once every 40 seconds. Okay, so I'm just going to sketch something here. So it's going to look it's sinusoidal, right? So it's going to go like this. One, two, that's one cycle, two cycles. Make sure you learn how to count cycles. There's often tricky questions about that. Okay, so there would be three cycles. Now it tells me that it rotates once every 40 seconds. So this is 40 seconds. This would be 80 seconds. And this would be 120 seconds. Now the next part of this says <coughs> that the radius is 7 meters and the axle is 8 meters above the ground. So the axle is going to be where my... Um, my middle line is here, right? The middle line. Um, so here, the axis is, this is seven meters. The, the radius is seven meters and the axle is eight meters above the ground. So if the axle is eight meters above the ground, that means this has to be eight meters here. Now, the radius of the Ferris wheel is seven meters, so to my axle, and we always start with the um, equation of the axis here. So this is eight. I'm going to add seven. That's going to give me the maximum here of 15 meters. And I'm going to subtract seven. So this is a little calculation you're going to do frequently. And of course that would be one. So there's my three cycles. The axis, eight meters above the ground. The radius is seven meters. So that means it goes to one meter above the ground. Make sure your Ferris wheel isn't below the ground. Okay, 6b, it says a water wheel with a radius of three meters whose center is at water level and rotates every 15 seconds. Okay, so it's it says that it's 
water wheel is the center is at at water level so this is my water here that's also my axis now it says I'm to start at the lowest point and go up so I do one two three three cycles let's extend this line here so this is my water wheel this is the water level it has a radius of three meters so that means the amplitude is three meters <clears throat> so it goes up to three meters and it goes below the water level to minus three so this is still three amplitude is always a positive measurement and it rotates once every 15 seconds <coughs> I'm sorry so that means that here this is one rotation from here to here you're going up one back down so this is going to be 15 seconds here once every 15 seconds so from here to here that's going to be 30 seconds and this is going to be 60 seconds what what I say 15 30 45 going by 15s okay there we go there's our water wheel okay let's do the bicycle tire it says a bicycle tire with a radius of 40 centimeters so the radius radius is 40 centimeters so that means the amplitude is going to be 20 centimeters okay so a bike wheel doesn't go below the ground it said to start at the lowest so we'll start with the tire here on the ground it's going to go up and down three times they asked for up and down okay so there's the start of it just make your wiggly waves here so the radius is 40 centimeters radius of 40 centimeters okay so I'm sorry that's not an amplitude of 20 it's an amplitude the amplitude is 40 the radius is the amplitude okay so if the radius we're starting on the ground the axle is going to be in the middle here so if the radius is 40 centimeters that means this is 40 from here to here and this is 40 from here to here so that means my axis is at 40 centimeters my highest point is going to be 80 centimeters and the ground where the tire is on so here's a radius not the diameter that's what I was thinking here when I changed that so the radius is 40 centimeters one two three and it rotates once every two seconds so there's two seconds there's four seconds there's six seconds okay and the last one, D, it says a girl lying on an air mattress in a wave pool that is three meters deep with waves 0 0.5 meters in height that occur in seven second intervals. So she's in a wave pool that has water that is three meters deep. So if the water was at rest, she would be right here. Now they ask you to start, all these says start the first point at the lowest possible height so she's in water three meters deep and waves are 0.5 meters in height so she's going to start at 2.5 meters that's when it's lowest you've been to a wave pool before so it goes like this two three like that so we need the axis is three she goes down 0.5 meters so I'm adding and subtracting the radius here or the the amplitude 0.5 so this is going to be 3.5 and this is going to be 2.5 so I add and subtract the radius to the axis so here she is in the wave pool she's not under the water because the waves go down and up right she's traveling this wave but she doesn't hit the bottom of the pool and these occur every seven seconds so there you go that's they're trying to get you to understand an axis where the axis is so the axis is the axle of a ferris wheel um, it could be the resting height of the pool 
it could be um, the radius of your bike wheel because that's the middle point so you're always looking for the middle and this one was a water wheel that here's the water level when it's flat so it goes down and up and down and up okay so those are just a few examples. The next lesson is going to get into all the transformations and all the rules that go with that. So that's where things start getting a little more confusing. Make sure you understand how graphs look here, what, how to start them, how to graph, what the period is, what is the amplitude. That's all this lesson was about. Take care. Bye.